Um, I'd like to present my lovely friend Jasmine Hodge from Fourth Valley College <laughs> and also um, Caroline. Um, the, um, as you can see, the presentation is about using Mahara template pages for assessment. So handing over to you. <clears throat> Thank you. Welcome Good in the morning, <laughs> Good morning everyone, I'm Jasmine Hodge uh, and I'm presenting with Caroline McConaughey and I'll introduce her in a minute. I'm taking five minutes of the presentation. Caroline's going to take the rest to show you the actual template in action and how uh, they can look. So I'm the Learning Technology Coordinator at uh, Fourth Valley College in Scotland and myself and my small team support about 20,000 students and staff over three campuses <clears throat> in the Fort Valley area. I'm also one of the proud founding members of MACARA, the Scottish Mahara User Group. So our Mahara birthday in Fort Valley College is the 16th of April 2009. And after a, a decision to rebrand Mahara to my e portfolio, which is accessed through Moodle, Mahara quickly became established and is one of our core college systems. So a little bit of statistics. So in our site, we currently have 8,175 active users and 337 active control groups. So we support our users with an extensive help area that's accessed through our Moodle platform as well. And these are created in Mahara pages. They include screen captures, help guides, and the actual help area is co-created by my team, staff, and students. And it also hosts some examples of really good practice. Oops. So when the assessment grew in demand and students were required to submit a more diverse range of evidence, and different media types such as uh, video, audio, and also music clips. <clears throat> Me and my team as learning technologists had to identify some new assignment types to capture and present this range of different evidence. So Mahara page templates are designed to support, curate and display this complex evidence that I've mentioned. They also support the students with scaffold instruction, <clears throat> including encouraging them to be creative and unique in their page submissions with the use of um, Mahara page skins and the flexible page layout options, the sort of object driven artifact boxes. So in addition to providing students with these template pages, which do instruct and support them through all the assessment requirements, the Mahara pages um, are a secure way to store and audit the assessment trail because when each page is submitted to the control group environment set up by the teacher, they are date and time stamped, essentially locked down until the teacher reviews and can feed back to the student with any remediation advice or changes as with any online assignment situation. The feedback process is also private between the teacher and the student and the Mahara page structure offers an excellent opportunity for richer feedback dialogue between the, the teacher and the student and the whole process can be easily audited as well by internal verifiers and external verifiers by just making them an admin in your control group. So I will hand over to Caroline now, who is a lecturer in our business department in travel and tourism, and she'll demonstrate the use of our uh, Mahara page templates and the submissions to the control group. Great, thanks, Jazz. Do I have control rights now, Jazz? Is that? I'll just make. Oops. Um, Don't, Caroline, you should have presenter rights now. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Thanks, Richard. I couldn't find on the list there. No problem.
Sorry, I'm a little bit slow, but I'll get there. <laughs> okay, um, so then the, um, I'm, I'm showing you, basically what I'm showing you now is the scaffolding um, that Jazz was talking about. Um, the reason that the Travel and Tourism Department at the college wanted to use Mahari ePortfolio more is um, as a result of listening to learners or feedback, um, there was a lot of kind of the students were kind of saying there's too many <coughs> End of, end of year assessments, big reports, um, and it's just too much. So um, I got together with Jazz and uh, Jasmine and a couple of the other lecturers in our department, um, and we looked at different um, units um, that would lend themselves more to ePortfolio. Some would, some wouldn't. Um, and for this particular unit, tour guiding and resort rep that you can see here, um, there is an there is a, a training manual that the students have to put together um, for a new member of staff joining the company. And um, it covers all four of the learning outcomes for this unit. So we kind of thought we put this scaffolding together and you can see here that each block has something for the students to populate. Um, we originally set it up as text boxes, but my kind of vision was more of, well, this is your scaffolding guys, off you go try you know maybe take videos of yourself you can upload sway um it doesn't really matter what you kind of upload just as long as it's professional um and it shows you know you've met the evidence requirements really so that this this is a scaffolding um the first thing i kind of came across was okay well i would give this release this put the portfolios would be released to me i would give the students feedback release it back to them and then it was the remediation so we created a remediation tab here um, but uh, each um, college, I'm sure, it does it differently because you could actually say, for example, here we've got job burnout. You could the students could actually add a box and put 3.1 remediation. So we agreed as a team that there would be a remediation box um, there. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you an actual student's e-portfolio that they submitted to me. Um, Kim has allowed us to use her work, which is great. And you can see here, she's got a logo. Um, she's based, mainly used the text boxes, but if I kind of scroll down, it's got a lot of information in there. There's also um, Word documents. Um, I'm gonna come back all the way back down, more Word documents here. Um, and then you can see this box here, sorry, I've gone up too far. This is the remediation. So this is where Kim's added the little bit that she just had to add, had to, add to complete the assessment. Um, my comments, you can see here um, what, what she's achieved and what she needs to achieve. And then I just kind of released the e-portfolio back. The key thing about this when lockdown happened was rather than, so it was, we had student evidence there already. It wasn't um, like I, I'd said, this is your deadline and this has to be emailed to me or submitted to Moodle by such and such a day. I set bite-sized chunk deadlines for each particular block to be completed. Um, and the students enjoyed it a lot more. We got feedback that less, you know, less end of um, you, uh, end of block assessments. And I'm just going back to what Lisa said. I'm not sure that you joyful, but it was more joyful for all of us. I think it was better for me managing my work, and it was really better for the students as well. And we got that feedback. Um, yeah. Um, so I think <laughs> that was kind of just wanted really to show you an example of that. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just, maybe I've gone a little bit too fast, but hopefully not. Um, I'll just hand back to Jazz um, so that um, you can finish off. Thank you. Thanks, Caroline. No so I think uh, for now, the future for Mahara for us is upgrading to the latest version. We're go to, going to build a brand new site for next year as well. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, start using the new feature that already exists of pushing the templates into the control groups. So that's missing out that little part that the students have to copy the page and make it their own, which is going to make it even more easier um, for the students to pick up the templates. So I think that's that's us done. So I don't know if we want to go out if anybody's got any questions. I just, I 
sorry, sorry. Sam. I was say, does anyone have any questions or comments for Jazz or Caroline? But as you as you can see, there are comments there already. So I don't know if you wanted to respond to any of them. Yeah, I'm. I'm just saying for your Sam, it's um, the deadlines, just bite sized chunk made it much easier and when lockdown happened some of the students couldn't get access to their, their drives at the college but because they had it all there anyway they could access the e-portfolios which was great. Um, I, Christina I have got um, 15 students using that one at the moment but we have two cohorts one in Stirling and one in Falkirk so there's another 15 students there. We also use it for creating a culture of customer care and also um, enhancing skills for employment for some of our NQ students. So that's kind of where they provide a portfolio of their learning as well. So we're, we're building on that. Um, um, Baz has said, how did you share the template with the students? I'll give that over to Jazz because what Jazz would do yeah. is come into my class and she taught the students how to do it, <laughs> through how to yeah. do that. So, <clears throat> what the students do at the moment is they pick up the template page that the teacher creates that's sitting within the group, then they save, they copy that and they save it as their own. But in the latest versions of Mahara, you can push a template page out straight to the group. So that, that saves that step. So we don't have that version yet, but we will have next year. <laughs> but at the moment, it's, it's a really simple process. And we demonstrate it to the students in the class or with a screen capture, showing them how to search for the page that Caroline's created, they copy it and name it as their own. And then it sits within their own e-portfolio to configure and, you know, send to the control group when required. That's for brilliant. The and it's kind of about like setting, setting the tone right when you start with the students so this is what we're going to be using and you find that if you're using it as they progress then you don't need to do that anymore the students can just do it because they're so used to it all the different functions which is great yeah i mean our sound production department in the college can use mahara 100 percent for all their assignment uh, design all their uh, online assignment is used with mahara so the templates work perfectly I think Baz had a question, I'm not sure who had the question about the um, Wi-Fi for the students. It's Gordon. Gordon, sorry. Sorry, Gordon. All the messages went on. Um, um, yeah, we did a little bit, um, but not too much, actually. Um, it wasn't a huge issue. I don't know if, Giles, you heard that across the rest of the college, but for the travel and tourism students, we seem to be okay with that. It was more the technology that we had to get the computers and the laptops to the students. To be yeah, we've done a lot of that, and I think what well, so I think a few of the major uh, mobile network providers as well was offering unlimited data to everyone. From I think that was started in April, so I think that made a difference. So even students that didn't have, you know, fibre broadband or fast Wi-Fi, they did have access to unlimited mobile data. So I think you know, a combination of all these things. We didn't have a lot of students that couldn't complete because they didn't have access to yeah. Wi-Fi or technology. And that yeah. was a combination of the mobile network Wi-Fi and the college issuing a lot of laptops. I think 380 laptops have been issued to students in the community in the past few months. Yeah, Ali, which trouble scenario did the students encounter? during building a digital I think what would you say Caroline I think maybe initially initially just learning the environment yeah when I would train students I would I would compare it to the to other technology that you use on a daily basis so I would say it's just like uploading to Facebook it's just like sharing you know to a news feed on Instagram and it go all right, okay, because they couldn't really argue that they couldn't use that. So it, I think it really helps their digital skills as well. Yeah, I think, I think the only thing is the students were a little bit scared because I really, I, so I don't know, my vision was like they'd upload videos of themselves talking other than all that typing information, and, but they're just a wee bit scared to do that. So maybe that's from my end to kind of 
push that a little bit more next year. Um, and sometimes they would release the portfolio to the wrong lecturer, so <laughs> so we had to fix that and send it back to me. But apart from that, once we knew that, then that was that was fixed. So. Yeah, and then they start they start sending each other pages as well. They start getting quite clever with it and making other pages and sharing them with each other and yeah, changing colours and putting pictures in. It's great. Yeah. Absolutely, and even um, there's some examples of students introducing themselves using video on their phone and stuff mm -hmm. so yeah i think the good thing about templates i feel is that if they just want to keep their head under and do what's required they can do that following the instruction but then if some students are really quite creative and really want to shine and show look you know what i can do and put that little bit extra in then they've they've got scope to do that as well So Jan's asking, once the student copies the template, do they share it the same as if they they do, yes, 100% becomes their own page and their own e-portfolio. They work on it and then they submit it to Caroline or another lecturer into their control group that they're, they're part of. So yes. I think that's yeah. it for questions to you guys. I know there's a side conversation going on about plans and groups and being able to <laughs> template this that way. Um, does anybody else have um, any last questions? Oh, look, James has one now. When using templates, do you show your students an exemplar first? That's a good question. Yes, yes. Yeah. So showing them this is how it, it's going to look. This is how it will eventually um, become your complete set of evidence. Yeah. So they, they see the end result before. They start their own that definitely helps yeah because sometimes they don't really know what it looks like so to show them is definitely much better yeah do and you ever show previous students work do you ever show what um other students have done um We've done work, haven't we i think so yeah yeah we have done um just as a kind of yeah yeah we've done that on previous occasions yeah i'm happy to share our help area um with anyone you know that wants it obviously screen captures um are on our own site that's rebranded but um i'm happy to share nails which as you can put it in the mahara page and show you database activity they're already in no, they're not in the database activity, but they're already in Mahara pages, so I'll just put the, the secret URLs into the, the database activity. That would be wonderful. Okay, I think that's it for questions. So thank you very much, Jazz and Caroline. Thank you. Um, everyone wants to do a little clap with their little avatar. Thank you, Caroline, for coming in in your holidays. And oh, that's all right. I'm away. I love me. Well, I would say I'm away to Sunday, but we're in Scotland, eh? So, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys. See you later.